live. Hi, everybody. Um, I'd love to welcome you today to Sarah Stevick's session on thrifty instructional design. Good morning. Put in the chat where you're coming from. Um, if it may not be morning for you, actually. So put in the chat where you're coming from. Um, a little bit about Sarah. She is a former educator turned instructional designer. She aims to create and compile free resources and support for those who are interested in learning more about instructional design and L&D through her volunteer initiative, Teaching a Path to L&D. Learn more about this group of volunteers and access their work on LinkedIn. Oh, I'm sorry, on teachlearndev.org. So yay, Sarah, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thanks, Laura. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Super excited and, and honored to have been chosen to hang out with you this morning and, and that you chose to hang out with me this morning. So or if it's afternoon or evening, wherever you're at, that's all gravy, too. So hi, I'm Sarah Stevick, and today we're going to be talking about thrifty instructional design authoring on a budget. So by the end of this session, we will have added a bunch of new authoring tools to your toolbox and some explored some old tools in some new ways. A little bit about our agenda today. So what are we gonna uh, cover? First off, who is this lady? Uh, so I'll give you a little bit about my background and then we're gonna go over a little bit of this main authoring tools and a little bit of that auxiliary authoring tools. And then where can I find, so if you have any questions about a type of tool or something that you've heard of, but you can't quite remember the name, we're gonna have some Q&A here at the end. Today is a super interactive session. Really appreciate all participation. Love that chat interactive. Uh, love the emoji interactive. So make sure that um, you're digging in deep to get the most out of everything we got going on today. Okay, so first off, again, hi, I'm Sarah Stevick. Uh, I've been an instructional designer for a year now. Prior to that, I was a teacher for nine years. And I love free resources, right? When you're a teacher, you just don't have, you know, all the financial means in the world. Do I have any other teachers out there? Can I get some like heart emojis from former teachers or, you know, those who are currently teaching, maybe looking to transition out. Uh, lots of heart emojis, I love it. Yeah, so, you know, when we think about making instructional materials and we see all these price tags like, oh, it's $1,000 for a year subscription, our jaw kind of goes, wow, <laughs> right? So that is our goal today is to kind of figure out some alternative options that won't break the bank. All right. So digging in deep here, we're gonna take a look at our polling question. So if you go ahead and click the poll section over in the conversations, you'll see most of you have already gone ahead and answered this poll, which is awesome. But if you haven't yet, the question is, what tools are you most excited to add to your toolbox today? E-learning authoring tools, video editing tools, audio editing tools, slide deck slash job aid tools, or auxiliary tools. You can vote for more than one, fun fact. Um, looks like we have almost an even split between e-learning authoring tools and auxiliary tools. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna share a secret with everyone. Auxiliary tools are my favorite. I like to think of those as like the accessorizer of instructional design. It's how we add accessories to really make our designs pop. All right, great. Well, thank you all for adding your votes in there. And we're gonna go ahead and close that out now that we, oh, looks like e-authoring tools for the win. I have two really great ones to share with you today. And we will be jumping into that here next. So let's go ahead and start. So we're gonna start off with our heavy hitters. These are gonna be your e-learning authoring tools that are more comprehensive. They make full-blown courses. Um, I'm gonna 
or I'm sorry, Laura is going to drop a link in the chat for you. And this link is going to take you to this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is something that I really recommend bookmarking, okay? Because you can come back to this as often as you want. This is the toolbox that we are going to create together. So the best part about conferences is that we get to learn from each other. This isn't just me up here, you know, wah, 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 wah. Um, I want to hear what, what you know, too. So go ahead and bookmark this for later. And in that first tab under e-learning uh, tools, in that first column, which uh, is the name of the tool, you can go ahead and add in different authoring tools that you know of. It's okay, they can be free, they can be paid, just any tool that you know of. If you see colored boxes, that means somebody is editing in that box. So please just go ahead and select another one. And then once you put the name of the tool, go ahead and put what it costs. If you don't know, that's okay. And then if you have a website link to it, please no affiliate links. There are no affiliate links today. Uh, all of the tools that I'll be sharing with you, I'm sharing with you because I think they're awesome. Nobody's paying me to say anything about them, nothing like that. This is pure resource sharing here. So please no affiliate links. And then a tool learning resource. Is there a YouTube video that we could watch on it? Is there a LinkedIn learning course? And you can add through this, you know, throughout the session and also after the session today as well. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and play some music from the lovely bensound.com just while you're filling in a couple things. Just a little plug for Ben Sound. Uh, they do have royalty free and free downloads for music. It's great to put in as background music for any of your videos. It's great for slide decks, these interim activities. Uh, I always like the elevator music because like you live right here, right? You live right here. Yeah. Don't be afraid to dance. It's okay to get groovy with it, you know? This is called bensound.com and the website's down here at the bottom, but you'll also get this in the spreadsheet today. Every tool that we go over today, I will add to that spreadsheet. So you'll have links to everything that we go through today, but I'm gonna add them at the end because I wanna see what you guys have to add first. Dang, check y'all out. This is great. Beyond is, is easy. Man, that's a tongue twister. Try saying that five times fast. Uh, Ice Spring, ooh, Culture Capture. I haven't heard of that one before. Seven Tops, Camtasia Doodly. Haven't heard that one. All right. These are some great ones. Excellent. Looks like we have some more adding happening. We'll give it another moment. In the meantime, Laura, are there any questions or key things to pop out from the chat? Um, they are very much enjoying all the resources and shouting out for their favorites. Some people love Kaltura and there's um, some more free music uh, thrown in there, mix kit. So hopefully that'll end up on our spreadsheet as well. Love it. I love this interactiveness and really giving all together to make a resource that's so robust, right? Um, so really throw in as much as you can there. You can add more than one. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with a lot of authoring tools, that's okay. Our friend, the Google, it knows quite a few uh, pretty good tools you can add. I'm going to give about 30 more seconds, and then we'll go ahead and move on. All right. Dang, y'all are good. Look at all these awesome things. I do see one of the ones that we're going to be covering today, but I haven't seen the other one yet. So this one, the e-learning authoring tools, these are comprehensive authoring tools. 
Uh, we do have other tabs for video tools, audio tools, slide deck tools, and auxiliary tools. So if you've added in uh, like a video editor, or audio tool, those kind of things, if you wanna go ahead and copy and paste them over into one of the other tabs, you can, that'd be great. All right. Y'all ready to dig in? Can I get some, some emojis going on, some reactions? Let me know if you're ready to go. All right, got some claps, smiles, thumbs up. Cool beans. All right, let's rock it out. Okay, so the first of the two e-learning tools I wanna share with you today is the Ed App tool. Ed App is a micro learning based LMS system with a built-in no coding required authoring tool. And it was really designed with mobile implementation in mind. Though it can be used on a computer or a tablet, it's just very mobile friendly as well. It has a pretty robust freemium account, freemium, you know, the free premium. <laughs> and that offers templates, interactives, data analytics, leaderboards, uh, social and peer learning, and a whole bunch more. For the free version, there's no user limit or course limit. So you can have as many people take your courses as you want. You can make as many courses as you want in there. You can create and launch as much as you like for however many within that ed app LMS system. However, if you want to put these, uh, you want to export the SCORM file to upload it into a different LMS system, that one's paid, but it's still pretty decently priced depending on how many users you have. You can choose to assign a course that is pre-made in their library as well. So they actually have some canned courses for you uh, that you can pick from or you can create your own. And you can use a template to build out something quick or create it completely from scratch. So it's really versatile. Another really attractive component to this is that it easily converts your existing PowerPoint slides and it automatically helps you create interactives in between with the information. So you can add quizzes and games to really up your engagement game. It's also compatible with, are you ready for it? Drum roll, Canva. We all love the Canva, don't lie, right? We love the Canva. So the fact that it is actually, you're able to pull in Canva capability within that LMS and authoring tool, I mean, it, it sounds too good to be true, right? The free version of this does have SCORM files, but it has to be deployed within the Ed App LMS system, which is free. Um, and each user creates an account for free and each author creates an account for free. Um, but if you want to export the SCORM file, so let's say you have an in-house LMS system that you would want to upload it to, then you would have to pay for the premium pro versions. Um, but let's say you just want to create a free course and you want to track, you know, how your users did, what was their score, when did they take it, how long did they stay in the system? That all tracks for free within the Ed App LMS system. It is a pretty awesome, awesome tool. Um, while this is definitely a user-friendly and seemingly magical option, it is important to note, uh, again, if you want to export the SCORM file, and then there's also some additional features, you would have to invest in their premium subscription. So if you didn't want to use the Ed App LMS, it would cost some cash, not gonna lie to you there, uh, but it's relatively decently priced compared to other comprehensive authoring tools. Also, if you're looking for something to build out portfolio pieces, in order to access the courses, they would have to sign up for a free account to view it. You could always take screenshots or videos of the course, however, and add that to your portfolio as an alternative, just because you know, if, if you're a recruiter or hiring manager and you're looking through those portfolios, you're not necessarily gonna wanna sign up for a whole program to view a course. So that is one little drawback, but again, take a video, put in screenshots, write out your design process, 
and you're golden and good to go. You can check out lots of free tutorials on YouTube and they actually have their own YouTube channel and I'm gonna go ahead and drop that into the chat for you if you're interested in checking that out. Alrighty, moving on to the next one. I did see this in our list and I'm so excited to see this in our list because this thing's beast, right? Uh, H5P.com is a uh, open source platform that provides a space to create HTML5 content like interactive videos, quizzes, presentations, that kind of stuff. It's completely free to use and you create and edit and publish the content all within your browser window. They have a great user community where you can see examples of work, learn tips and tricks and share knowledge. So it's always great when a tool comes with a robust community you know, that's one of the really attractive features of Articulate is that they have such a great community and learner forum and how to's and examples. H5P has a pretty similar community. So that's always really nice. Um, while the end user does not have to do anything other than open their browser and go to the site to access the content, as the author, you would have to install the H5P excuse me, H5P plugin, and you would have to use it with either the h5p.com hosting site, which is not free. It's about $57 a month for one to three authors, or another LMS system that provides what's called LTI integration. But wait, there's more. Luckily for us, it's compatible with Moodle. Moodle is a free open source LMS system. So you can run these courses all for free from within Moodle. Um, while there are pre-made settings, if you're a little code savvy or sa like me, savvy at Googling code, <laughs> uh, you can really do quite a bit as far as customizing your content layouts and different interactions. Uh, if you're not familiar with JavaScript, that's okay. They have some great content on their website to help you get started if you're interested. And there's lots of great YouTube videos again, and of course the community to help you with this, should you wish to customize your content beyond the provided options. You can test out the different interactives um, that they have offered. I'm gonna drop it into the chat here, h5p.org, there we go. Um, slash test drive dash H5P, as long as you have made your free account. Word of caution, people, this is really important. Anything created on H5P.org can be viewed by anyone, and there's no way to make that content private. So it's very important to keep that in mind if you're working with confidential or proprietary information. There are ways that you can customize it and work within the element, like within a separate LMS to have private content. It does take a little bit more effort and there is a little bit of a learning curve for that. Um, while there are some other tools out there for course creations, these two seem to have some of the top freemium offerings. But does anybody out there have another great freemium tool they'd like to give a quick shout out to? Feel free to use the raise hand button so that you can come up on stage with me. I'd love to see your face and, and uh, I think we have time for, time for one. Don't be shy. Oh. Okay. Hi, Linnea. Did I say that correctly? Yes, you did. Uh, let me put my camera on. Hi. Yeah, so I was just uh, wanting to shout out uh, Composer Freemium. So Composer is a paid tool, but they have a freemium account where you get to create five courses for free, and they're basically just SCORM files, so you can do whatever with them. Excellent. That's an awesome addition. Thank you so much, uh, Lena. Yeah. Did I, did I, yeah. Linnea. Yeah. Linnea. It's Linnea. Okay. That's so it's beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Linnea. I really appreciate that share. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next type of tools, video and audio authoring tools. So we're going to head on back to our Google Sheet. 
We're going to drop that link in the chat once again there for you, just in case you uh, didn't quite get it the first time. And we're going to click on the second tab along the bottom. Ooh, y'all overachievers out there. I love this. I love this. I'm already seeing some great uh additions here. So this is for video authoring tools. If you have any that you would like to add, would love to have those there for us so we can build this nice, robust toolkit that we can all access and, and have readily available for us. Uh, remember to be on the lookout to see if a cell is already occupied. So it'll have an outline on it. So you can click on any of the cells below. Don't worry, I can delete empty rows later as needed. Um, and then once you're finished there, head on over to the third tab and we're gonna hit audio at the same time. So go ahead and head over to the audio tab as well and add in some there that you are aware of. All right, I'm gonna give you about a minute to do that. In the meantime, back to our elevator music. You know, we can go shopping. We can also do the Q-tip, 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 throw it away, right? Yeah. We like to have a good time here. No, no pressure. Just low, low key, jamming. You know, we can even do the wave, right? Sending it to you, Laura. Go ahead. Yeah, man, send it back. Yeah. All right. That was teamwork. Teamwork makes that dream work. Right, love it. All right, I'm getting some thumbs up. Are we good to move on? That's, oh, I love that alliteration, John. Friday funky dancing, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a couple different options that I would like to highlight with you. So while this is not completely free, Wondershare Filmora is an amazingly priced tool and comes with a 30-day free trial. After the 30 days, you can subscribe for $40 a year, which, again, I mean, that's pretty reasonable. Uh, or you can buy the lifetime plan for $69.99, $70. Um, but that's uh, pretty much has the same offering as like Camtasia, except without the um, interactive component built in. It does not do SCORM files. So it is a pure video editor, but it's a very robust editor. Uh, there is a advanced pro version, Filmora X, um, excuse me, Filmora Pro, which is $89.99, $90. I don't know why they do that. Actually, well, I do, it's marketing, but you know. Uh, for a year or for a lifetime, it's $149 for the pro. But I mean, this is like for intermediate professional video editors, probably not what we need as instructional designers. So you're probably pretty good to go with the $69.99 one. And you can learn more about the differences between the two here in this link. I'm gonna drop in the chat for you. And so, this is a very similar product to Camtasia, except it does not have the built-in SCORM interactive capability like we mentioned. It can be used to make videos and GIFs and add in tons of great effects like music from a free included library that they have, or it can be imported if you wanna you know, check out Ben Sound or some of those other great tools that we have in our spreadsheet. They have the pan and zoom, text editions, green screen. They have a more advanced audio mixer compared to Camtasia, so that's pretty cool if you're really big into having a comprehensive or blended video and audio editor tool all in one. Um, they have video stabilization, so like if you're really shaky like me, right, with a camera, <laughs> you know, you use a selfie stick and you're like bobbing all over the place. Um, it can help really even that out with that split screen and really a whole bunch more. I believe there, 
Are we gonna get the final version of this Google Sheet with Sarah's additions? Yes, so I will be adding in all of the links from this slide deck after today's session, and you will always have access to this Google Sheet. Highly recommend bookmarking it. Okay. So back to free, because if it's for free, then it is for me. Um, so using the reactions, please give me a clapping hands for my Mac users and a heart reactions for my Windows users. Mac, Windows, Mac, Windows. Okay, I see lots and lots of Windows, a couple Macs here and there. That's cool, you know, whatever floats your boat, it's all good. Um, so Mac users, you're probably already well aware of iMovie by now. If you're an iPhone user, you're probably aware of iMovie as well. Uh, but if not, don't discount it just because it came pre-installed. iMovie has quite a lot to offer. For my Windows users, you may or may not know this, but you have a pretty decent pre-installed video editor as well. It is called Windows 10 Video Editor. And there are a bunch of free tutorials on YouTube for how to maximize both of these video editors. And the best part is it's full free, right? Would anybody like to share a freemium video editor? Come off mute, raise your hand. Would love to have have someone come up with me. I have no, no raised hands yet. None yet. Anybody? Oh, there's some in the chat. Hit Film Express. Oh, here right. we go. We've got Lin Linnea again. Yay. Yeah. So sorry, sorry. I actually I have a series on my YouTube channel where I try free tools. So uh, Hit Film Express. It has a free version that's really good. It ha also has like the green screen feature and everything you would want and it doesn't it's not that hard on your computer as maybe some other like really good free tools are so that's that's my tip love it can you would you do us a favor and drop your youtube channel link into the chat so we Absolutely. can all check that out yeah we'll excellent do. thank you linia you're welcome uh, give her a round of applause please with some reaction she's come up twice now that's brave mm -hmm. thank you ma'am all right so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some, that says video authoring tools, but you and I both know that that's uh, audio. <laughs> uh, and we know that because it has little headphones. Okay, so. Um, I have yeah. one more person who'd like to come up. Yes, please, 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 that'd be Let's great. Let's invite Rachel up. Rachel, there you go. Can you hear us? Sorry, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Rachel. I I hit the wrong button. Oh, you didn't oh. mean to come up on stage. No. Is what you're saying. So mm -hmm. everybody, give Rachel a clap for being um, brave enough to tell us. Whoops. <laughs> now, here you go. If it makes you feel any better, Rachel, <laughs> I hit the wrong button all the time, all over the place. Like, it's it's a very uh, unique and special contribution to be able to give that. So I appreciate a, a like, you know, whoopsie button hitter. Appreciate that, so. Okay, so many of you may already be familiar with Audacity. It's a great free audio editor and it has lots of plugins, supports, many different sound file formats and it can stream directly to podcast listeners. So if you're someone who's interested in doing podcasts and that kind of um, audio editing, then this is a great tool. You know, however, the user interface does take a little bit of getting used to and it is a little bit, well, let's be frank, outdated. It's a free freemium tool, you know, so can't beat the price. Um, but the learning curve, it, there's a little bit of it. But another free option to explore that has a modern unit, talking so hard sometimes, um, it has a more modern user interface and maybe a little bit more user friendly is called Ocean Audio. While having similar features to Audacity, Ocean Audio allows for previewing added audio effects in real time. This is a huge advantage because it means that you don't have to modify the original audio file to actually hear the effect being applied. Um, 
So it's very helpful if you're like me and like to play around a bit to find just the right mix for your audio editing. Um, do we have any questions in the chat or would anybody like to drop in the chat or come off mute to add another audio freemium tool? This would be a raise your hand moment. Come on up. Oh, here comes somebody. We got Kira. I think Yay. it's Kira. Hi, Kira. Hello. I can turn on my camera. Um, I'll admit that I have not used this tool in a while because I've not needed to because I've made a good point of always having a decent um, microphone. But if you are a Mac user, you have GarageBand. And GarageBand gives you a lot of fun tools to play with along with being able to input and edio edit audio. So GarageBand and iMovie have been with Apple since the beginning of times, it seems. Uh, and they are definitely overlooked and undervalued, but they are really great tools. I love that addition, Kira. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we tend to forget about these things sometimes when they come pre-installed. Let's give her a round of applause. I love the claps, you know, some hearts, love it. All right, great. So moving on to slide deck and job aid authoring tools, back on over to our handy dandy spreadsheet, you know. We're gonna click on that fourth tab along the bottom. I see some great ads already. Ah, the tried and true, the PowerPoint. Yep, Prezi, Pear Deck, Canva, Miro, Slido. These are all great. Uh, continue to add it in there. Um, and while you are adding in there, I'm going to go ahead and share a couple of the ones that I personally use quite a bit. Um, so, I mean, it's free. Google Suites, I mean, that's my jam. I love a good PowerPoint or Google Slides fresh document because you can move everything around just the way you need it. You can pull in pictures, you can pull in videos. Um, you can use these to create any type of infographic, user guide, workbook, etc. because the elements are very easy to move around and it supports, like I said, images and videos. So even if you download a Google Slide presentation as a PDF, and then you re-upload it to your Google Drive, when you open that PDF and you click the image of the video, it'll actually play the video in the PDF. It's really cool. Um, so, you know, pretty neat there. Of course, we got the Canva, we got the free pick, but the one that I've really been attracted to recently is Visme. And you know, Canva, FreePick, and Visme all have the freemium options and you can pay for additional ones. And they're all very decently priced uh, for the pro versions if you're wanting a little bit more out of them. So I do wanna head on over to Visme real quick to give you all a run through of how I like to use it. So you can log in using your Google login or, you know, you can create a separate login, it's up to you. And you can make up to five free projects. You can delete projects to make room for more, so that's always an option. But I actually uh, don't create in here. I use it for something else, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But it has a whole bunch of different things. Presentations, infographics, documents. Love their charts and graphs. Um, printables, web graphics, videos, a whole bunch more. You can do a whole lot with this tool. But what I like to use it for, I'm gonna be real transparent here. Coming from teaching, graphic design is not my strong suit. I've had to work pretty hard at it and I'm still working at it and I'll probably always still be working at it. And a big part of graphic design is composition of a page, right? To me, the best way to really get your hands dirty with composition is to look at examples and then try and recreate those. So what I do is I go into presentations and then I have all these free ones that I can choose from. If it says premium, it's not free, but you can preview them if you'd like and you can see their layouts, right? Which is pretty cool. 
But I'm going to go ahead and open up one of the, the free ones. I really like the simple mode one. It's just very clean. And cool thing about this, you can check out lots of font pairings, like adding in that great contrast in there. It's excellent. But if you hit new slide, it actually gives you options of types of slides. And then when you click them, there's a whole bunch of different layouts that you can look at. And so what I do is I come in here for inspiration and then I try and recreate them within uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides so that I can get a feel of how and why it's composed the way it is. So that's definitely a, a bonus for me. Anybody wanna share one of their favorite freemium tools for slide deck and job aid authoring? Don't forget, if you want to come up and share, you've got to raise your hand so I can invite you on stage. Here comes someone. Yay. Oh, we got two. Yay, bring them up. So I've got one. I don't know if we can do them both. I'm going to try. Let's see if it kicks Jennifer off. Hold on, Jennifer. Jenny. Yay, Jenny. Yep. Oh. Yeah, it kicked her off, darling. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Should, All right. Did Jenny come back? <laughs> yeah. Jenny let, let, yeah, let's put her back, and then you'll raise your hand again. Come back, Jenny. Hi. Sorry. Back, Jenny and We're I actually learning. work together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite uh, tool, it's actually a great planning tool on top of being a, a slide deck tool is called Miro. Um, it's an online whiteboard, but you can create presentations within it and it's super, um, it's meant to be like a collaboration tool. Um, so they have a lot of like um, interactive features like polling or um, voting, sticky notes, things like that. So you can make a really super interactive um, presentation right within their um, platform. Um, there, it does cost- free. So they have a free version and it's a lot like um, VisMe where it's like you have a certain amount of projects you can have. Um, and I think the free version doesn't allow other people to edit, but you can still like present with it and build with it yourself. And then if you pay for it or if your company pays for it, it's got a, a lot of really, really neat um, capabilities. So 10 out of 10 recommend. It's also a great planning tool and like sketching out tool for projects. Awesome. Great ad, Jenny. Thank you so much. Round of applause for Jenny, and then we'll bring up Kira real quick. Yay. Here she comes. Huzzah. Thank Huzzah. you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and preface this with saying I used to work for Apple because <laughs> I'm going to be like, Apple this and Apple that. I used to train people on Apple software. And Keynote is an amazing slide builder. Um, again, it does get often overlooked but Apple uses it for all of its presentations and those look nice, don't they? Um, Keynote can output to PowerPoint. So if you need to transfer a file over to a PowerPoint, you can do that. It can also output to PDF. It can be an interactive PDF. So um, Keynote comes on your Mac. It's free, it's already there. <laughs> Love it. And that's okay that you work for Apple and that you know, you're know you a walking spokesperson for Apple. I can't try it. It's been some years, but I can't help it. It was a good pro. <laughs> well, and and that's the thing, right? Like if it's a really great product, it sells itself because other people are going to share it, right? That's how I really feel about like all these digital adoption platforms like Walk Me. Oh my gosh. Walk Me. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to get so much business from me just because I'm like, walk me this and walk me that. Blah, 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 walk me. Like walk me, walk me, walk me. So it's totally okay that um, that you're advocating for Apple products. And I think it's a really great reminder that Tried and true, oldies but goodies, right? Nothing wrong with that. They were so. always there. <laughs> Thanks, Kira. Round of applause for Kira. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get into my favorite type of tools, which are the auxiliary tools. It's all well and good to have a main authoring tool, but having a toolbox of items to actually fill them up <laughs> is crucial. Think of it like accessorizing. The main authoring tools are like your outfit, and then the auxiliary tools are the key accessories to take your outfit to that next level, right? 
So back on to our spreadsheet. Go ahead and add in tools for royalty-free pictures and illustrations, sound files, color palettes, font generators, icons, interactive plugins, add-ons, quiz sites, etc. This is what I like to refer to as the cool tool page or the junk drawer of instructional design because it always has exactly what you need, right? In the moment of need. So because it's what gets all designers all excited. So I'm going to give about two or three minutes to fill out this one because I know we have a ton of resources in your brains um, out there. We have 58 people here today. I am confident that we could just have like all these rows. Well, okay, there's like thousands of rows, but okay, at least a hundred. I think we could get to 100, pretty sure. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, any questions that have come up in the chat, Laura, or key points to pull out from the chat? There was a question about where would they place tools like Padlet and Google Jamboard, and then they kind of answered their question, maybe auxiliary. Would you agree? I would agree, yeah. If it doesn't fit in one of the other categories, throw it in the junk drawer. Throw it in the junk drawer. Absolutely. I am adding one now. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, and that is on the very last tab here. So, um, not sure. Are you still with me? I don't know why it's not. I'm with you. I appreciate that, Laura. But, oh, there's, I lost my line of, of what I typed. So many good resources. There we go. It's thinking. Oh. It's Friday for Google. Google, you know, it it needs a warm up grace period, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Ah, there they all are. Excellent. <gasps> Love it. Oh, I'm seeing some good ones. I'm seeing some that we are actually going to go over today. So that's pretty exciting. All right. Um, Prezi, was that added to the list already? Yes, it is uh, on row number four in the slide deck and authoring tools. Thanks, Matt. That was a great question. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So I know we're, we're you know, we got about 15 minutes left. And I want to make sure we get through all the cool tools because I got stuff to show you. Like, I just get so excited about auxiliary tools. Um, let me, I'm going to bring it in. going to rein it in here for you. Um, it's Woosa, right? You know, what, what's that movie where they, like, rub the ears and go Woosa? I think it's an Adam Sandler movie. I've seen it, but I cannot recall. Oh, yeah. Bad Boys 2, John says. Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> then I haven't seen it. Maybe I've just seen the commercial. Oh, that's oh bad right. boys. Okay, Grace said that. So we we've got a theme. We're we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna go with uh, majority consensus and bad boys. Excellent. Uh, okay. So let's talk color and font generators. We got fontjoy.com, font meme, uh, color mind is a great uh, color um, generator. You can lock different colors in. But the tool I really want to focus in on and show you is actually the red ketchup tool. So you can do a lot with red ketchup. Well, the tool. I'm sure you could also do a lot of culinary things with actual ketchup. But with the tool red ketchup, uh, you can resize images, compress images. You can resize GIFs, which is often challenging. So that's pretty cool. You can convert videos to GIFs. But the one that I really wanted to take a look at here is the color picker. Now this is cool. All you gotta do, let's say you come across a, a photo online, you know, I don't know, puppies. Why not? Everybody loves to look at puppies. Oh my gosh, they're adorbs. Okay, so you find a puppy or you know an actual image that you are inspired by. And let's say I love this little yellow lab here and I all I do is copy image, click on this box, control V, it pastes it in, and then I can get the hex code 
by clicking anywhere in the picture. How cool is that? It's so cool. Um, and it's completely free. So, you know. So for photos, videos, and illustrations, uh, Unsplash is great. Undraw has great illustrations that are very consistent. They're free, royalty free. Uh, UX Wing has pictures and videos. I love Pexels. Pexels is my jam, and that's because it is royalty free. It does have stock videos. So let's say you need a person typing on a computer and you want to add in a little stock footage to, let's say, your instructional video. It has a whole bunch that you can download and you can preview them, you know, and you can find similar ones. Like, how cool is that? You can put them right into some of those free video editor tools that we went through earlier today. So highly recommend um, the Pexels page. Laura, would you mind dropping the spreadsheet in the chat one more time, please? Sure thing. Okay. All right now. I'm gonna try and contain my excitement on this page because it's, it's, it's really one of my favorites. So icon repositories. I see this a lot with, um, you know, those who are newer to graphic design or newer to instructional design who are getting their feet wet with um, instructional design and using in that graphic component. Icon consistency is huge, right? And sometimes we have to have our branding colors and you have to download it and edit it in the Photoshop or on PowerPoint and all. It's just, it can be a big pain to find consistent icons, right? Here are four great sites that have free icons that you can use. But I really want to show you Flat Icon. Some of you might already know about this one, but if there is any tool that I just could not live without as an instructional designer, it's this one. You can do, again, they have freemium and it is very robust, but if you want all of them, you can definitely, um, sign up for that. Oh, did I continue? There we go. Maybe. All right, great. So here's the cool thing. Let's say I want to have an icon about, you know, a computer. And then I search it. Right. Oh. Take two, and then I search it. <laughs> And all of these pop up. If you click this filter up in the corner, you can actually filter it to only show the free ones, which I love. You can also filter it to show packs. So this way, if you pick a computer image um, from a specific pack, you already have a bank of icons that match in consistency for you. So same line weight, same illustrative styles, all that jazz. But wait, there's more because it's just so awesome. Um, so if I go back to my icons just by themselves, and you can do it within the pack too. But let's say, you know, I scroll through and there's pages upon pages. You can see how many pages there are for computers. Let's say, oh, I really like this one. Ah, oh, it doesn't match my branding. You can edit it. It's fully customizable. You can change the color of this. Let's say I have red. You can put in your hex code here so it matches all your branding colors. But you're like, now wait a second. I'd really like all my icons to have a circle behind them. Don't download this and put it over a shape in PowerPoint, no need. If you go down to shapes, you can add a circle. And you can change that color too, to any color that you want. And you can change the size. You can also change the size of the actual icon itself. You can move it over, you can move it up, you can rotate it, you can make it do all sorts of crazy things, right? It's pretty awesome. But wait, there's more. You can download it as different size Pexel PNGs you can 
download it as vector images, EPS, CSS. I mean, right? Like, oh, flat icon. You know my heart, right? All right. So, um, going back to our tools, a couple different editing tools that we have are remove uh, background or remove.bg, and that is a background remover. So all you do is you upload your picture and then it removes the background lickety split like that. It's super easy to use. You download it then and you can place it over anything. So no more fiddling around with like PowerPoint, removing the background or having to go into um, Photoshop to take out the background and all. Totally use this completely free. All these tools that I'm showing you here are free. Definitely check it out. Easygift.com, I love this tool. You can take any video, upload it, and make a GIF out of it. You can shorten it, you can change the background. Like, it's a pretty robust tool. Again, completely free. I did really want to point out um, Krita. Krita is similar to Photoshop. There is quite a bit of a learning curve. There are a few uh, instructional videos on YouTube for it but it's Photoshop for free. Like no need to pay, it does the exact same things. It has a very robust tool. It's pretty sweet. You do have to download it to your computer. Um, so there is that, just so you, so you know. And then openshot.org is another video editor and it's all online and it's pretty robust and it's free as well. It's open source. All right. Accessibility tools. So it's so important that we make our presentations and our learnings accessible for all different individual needs. And so here are a few of my favorites. Um, Ally.com, A11Y.com has a whole bunch of really great blogs and articles and tools to help you really uh, gain understanding on how to make accessible presentations and uh, e-learning modules and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Contrast Checker and Colorsafe.co. Contrast Checker is great to make making sure that you're picking colors that, honestly, there there's color schemes that can induce seizures. There's, uh, you know, you have to be mindful of people who uh, may be colorblind. Um, different visual impairments may make certain items harder to see or might cause headaches or migraines. So contrast checker is great for that. Colorsafe.co gives a whole bunch of palette recommendations that are um, already compatible and known to be safe and identifiable for uh, people who, have, who are colorblind. So that's a great tool. But the tool I really want to give a shout out to is Amara.org. This is an open source free captioning and subtitle tool. Okay. So if you've been looking for a way to transcribe your videos and get that for free, this is where you get it done. Amara.org. Okay. Another great tip I like to say to that. <laughs> It's going to sound so like, hmm, have the video open and then have your speaker up real loud and put your, your phone next to it and have speech to text up. You could always do that too. And then send yourself the file. It might require a little bit more editing, but you know, whatever gets the job done. All right. One of my favorite things, interactive editions, uh, Slido. It's pretty cool. It has a freemium. You can do uh, three different interactions, I think up to 100 participants. Poll everywhere. It's real-time polling. You can add in questions beforehand. You can add in questions on the fly. You can do competition questions. It tracks it all for you. The free version of Poll Everywhere, it does limit to just 50 uh, participants, so that's something to be mindful of. Um, but it's a pretty robust tool as well. Quizzoodle is a pretty neat tool that I, I really wanted to show here. 
not the logo. I mean, logos are cool, but you know, the actual website might be might be a little bit um, more helpful in our case. So this is essentially building in. It's almost like Kahoot, but it's built in already. They access it through a QR code that's on the screen. Um, it's free. It creates engagement. You know, it has a step-by-step -step guide. It's a pretty neat, cool tool. And then uh, crowdper.com is also another great interactive uh, tool component. And last but not least, music and sound effects. So uh, free sound li sounds library, there we go, <laughs> dot com, Ben Sound, freesound.org, and then uh, BBC Sound Effects Archive, which is that long <laughs> link there. All of these have great sound effects that you can add into your presentations or your videos. They also have great music. I do want to show you Ben Sound because I just, oh, it's just so great. Um, it is royalty free. There are purchase options, but there's also free options that, and they're the ones that just say download. You can search for all different types of music that you like. And of course, you know, you can check them out. Sound familiar? Hey, hey. So um, you just download them and you can have them up and running. A great tip to that. If you download it and have it up and running on your Windows Media Player, you can fade in, fade out. You can play it when participants are doing an activity just to like fill the dead air. Um, you know, I don't know about y'all. Give me a thumbs up if you've ever felt that dead air pressure where you're like, am I supposed to say something? Is this, is it okay that I'm, I'll just be quiet. I just, and then like you awkwardly look around Right, it's like, oh. <laughs> so auxiliary tools. I would love, 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 love to get someone to come up and share their favorite auxiliary tool uh, real quick and then we'll jump into Q&A with our last few minutes. And then I'll be out in the lounge uh, for a little bit to answer and chat and debrief. Thank you, we have a question. Um, just quickly review how, um how people have access to all this stuff again? Sure. So all you have to do is bookmark this uh, Google Sheet, and it will be available to you forever, forever and ever and always. Yeah. Well, unless we go into like zombie apocalypse and the internet goes down. And, there's that. You know, that's, there's always that. That's a risk we take. And here we have Shonda. Hi, Shonda. Hi, Sarah. How um, are you? I'm good in yourself. Oh, I'm living the dream. This has been all great. Right, all right. Thank you for the platform that you provide for us. But I'm like you. I like Ben Sounds. I've got a girlfriend that has her own ES ESL uh, company. And oh, so nice. she's looking to try and make her own material. And I said, well, let me try something. So I created a really quick little module because she deals with elementary kids and mm -hmm. really young kids. And so I actually went to Ben Sound and found a real cool track, took a part of that and made it as part of her intro and the et et outro. I'm having trouble speaking. It's this okay. Morning. We can call it an extra. <laughs> you know? An outro to her little uh, programming module that I created for her. So I love Ben Sounds, and as somebody mentioned in the chat, you do have to give credit to yeah. whoever the track belongs to, but they did mention someplace else that you don't have to do that. Excellent. Yes, that's always a really great point to, to bring up, and I do want to emphasize that. If it says that you need to give attribution, please, 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 please make sure that you're giving attribution. Like People have put out content out there for free, and... It's hard work. We all know how much effort it takes to create content. So give mad props where mad props are due. Right? Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Thank Shonda. Uh, Shonda. And last but not least, I know we're down. I guess we're at we're at time. We're so pretty much at time. time. Yes. 
Q and A, I'll just meet you out in the lounge if you want to join the table. Would love to have you. Thank you so much for having me and joining me today. And I wish you all a wonderful conference. Thank you, Sarah. This was great. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.